I was a, a candidate um, for the province in 1968. Bob, you remember 1968. <laughs> um, and uh, one of the things that, m that I found wonderful about our friars, and as mixed up as we were in 1968 as a community, at CTU, um, and we were really mixed up. Um, <laughs> we never really forgot where we came from. It was it was always it was always impressive to me that it was our friars who talked to the people who worked in the dining room. It was our friars who took the ladies who worked in who were house cleaners home late at night because they didn't want them to take the bus. It was our friars who never really got very far away from who we really are. And I think as we move into the future with brothers from so many different places that this challenge remains with us, that we learn not to be very far away from our origins. And I say our origins, not my origin. I don't even know where I came from. I was adopted. I don't, you know, they found me under a rock. Um, but, but our origins as brothers, that there are some, not, not in the basket, just in the basket. <laughs> or a cabbage, I mean, what are they talking um, But that, that as a community, we have brothers from so many different places that we all need to strive to be not very far away from our origins. And that's sloppy and hard and, and difficult to do, but it's what we're about as a fraternity in mission, as a fraternity marching. I, I, I love what the general said this morning about embracing the, 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 the present with passion. Embracing our brothers and our mission, our ministries with passion so that we can enter into the future with hope. That's the way to do it. The only thing I would add is, is that uh, something that Ken had referred to when he was giving his presentation is, is that uh, I really think, feel that this is also a time for us as friars to uh, become greater risk takers and become much more prophetic uh, than we ever have been. Uh, in the last few years. Uh, we're living in times where there is a, a desire to, to go back to what was. What was will never be again. Uh, uh, we're on the cusp of something new uh, that is becoming clear, I, I think, gradually, of uh, what it means to be church in light of our times uh, and, and, and the future. And I, we have to model uh, what it really means to be church, uh, that sense of mutuality and collaboration. Um, that there is a sense of uh, communion that we have and a unity, uh, the sharing of our gifts together, uh, that um, you know, uh, to get out of this power differential uh, stance that we have, um, the you know, the whole approach to uh, peacemaking. Uh, you know, we, we make a lot of intellectual assent to these things, but uh, I think we need to take more risks in actually being peacemakers and. Uh, um, making our presence felt in this area uh, um, that is, is so much needed in, in our a world that is so broken and, and, and so much violence on all levels. And I mean, even the violence within the fraternity that we have uh, needs to be addressed. Uh, and that, uh, but I do think we're being called to uh, become greater risk takers and much more prophetic. We've got minutes, let's use them. Uh, yeah. um, Jose talked about the collaborative thing, and uh, we've been talking about that for a few decades ourselves. Um, you mentioned the, uh, the notion of uh, playing a prophetic role, and what I see now, and this is sort of a generalization, but I think, I think a lot of it could be quickly proved. Um, take the way the church is operating in terms of being under the leadership of our bishops who certainly have put lay people into various positions in their diocese. Um, and, and that all looks good and sounds good, but my impression is that you don't hold those jobs as a lay person very long if you don't follow a certain way of thinking. Um, and so if that's collaboration, it's not the kind that I think of as a Franciscan. You mentioned risk taking. I think something that we need to do in terms of following through with that as part of the heart of our mission in the world today is to be able to take people into our midst, lay people, other people that maybe are religious of different communities, male, female, whatever, and allow them to have the responsibility to be creative 
which may take them in a dis different direction from what we're used to, but to be open to that and don't fire them because they disagree. And to me, that is a risk that would be very valuable. And it has a lot to do with building relationships, which is what peacemaking is about, so that you're including instead of excluding. I think Jose put it really well today when, in, in essence, he said, this is not a one-way street. Please work for us. You know, as I think you're describing, could be kind of a casualty of, of chanceries. It is indeed about how we learn and work with and for each other. And that's prophetic, though, today, because of the way it the is. church is operating. I, I agree with it. Well, I have a history comment um, about uh, <clears throat> the province of the Sacred Heart venturing forth. Vitus Dushinsky in 69 sent me to live with the brothers of Taze in a multicultural Franciscan community. And I was there for three years as an ecumenical Franciscan representative in the Taze community. And then when I came back, I was to teach at Hales. And um, I said to him, well, I don't want to live in a monastery anymore. That's not why you sent me to Taze. And I believe that a number of friars from Hales and myself were the first small community to live in an apartment on the south side of Chicago. We were called St. Damien's. And um, we lived together for about two years, three years. And um, the province ventured forth in trying something very different in St. Augustine's parish. And that was, that was uh, really prophetic. And I see now, I'm no longer part of the province, I'm part of the ecumenical Franciscans, but the province now has many small communities. And that was, that's something in our history that did not exist prior to 1970. That's quite true. And that was, again, very much part of the time. I think we'd be in a bad place if we decided we were going to, you know, as John put it, let's go back to the way things used to be. Because to be, as we heard today from the general, to be with people doesn't necessarily mean we've got this big monastery wall surrounding right. us. And that's how we came to know ourselves as friars. We are monks. This is not people sometimes think we are <laughs> based on the outfit. But uh, other things you might ask or <coughs> care? I think, you know, it, it sort of come up indirectly, but I think again, a great all that we have as friars is that in the whole area of reconciliation of all of them, I'm certainly speaking from my experience across the river. Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, just again, I think we have something to offer in that context. And, and the, the challenge is what is it? <laughs> you know, what, what, do we, what do we do? How do we respond? But I think reconciliation at all, all levels. And again, I think that's a particular terrorism, I think, that we have from our, our history of Francis. And just bringing together what both of you just said, uh, I think the reason you know you faced those issues that you're describing in East St. Louis is because you were there in a place where others had been and left. I mean, people felt abandoned there. And we're even wondering if we friars were going to just drop in and drop out. Um, we're there, and I think you faced what was their need. Something we did long, long ago. We need to continue to do. We're at lunchtime, or thereabouts. Yes, we are. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.